Welcome back to the origins of Silent Hill. We're standing outside the family butcher. And uh, what we were doing last time, let's take a look through our items. We have the feature piece, the past piece. We have a theater ticket and a key for the lumber yard. So the lumber yard was a place that we tried to go to previously. That's up there, but it's locked. Now we have a key to go there. Uh, before we do that, however, why don't we take a look? Well, when we started this, we took a look from uh, at a page from the manual talking about the story. Why don't we look at the bios of the characters? Because we've met all the side characters so far. Let's just take a look at what the manual has to say. Well, it says Travis. Travis Grady is an ordinary trucker with a troubled past. His sleep is frequently interrupted by nightmares, though he can never remember exactly what they're about. He only knows that they're terrifying and eerily familiar. There's Alessa, a mysterious girl who Travis saves from a fire. He's later told that she died, but why does she keep appearing? Also, why doesn't she look burned at all? I don't think we've asked that. She was very burned at the beginning. Dr. Kaufman. Dr. Kaufman is a cold and scientific man who works at Alcamilla Hospital. He's been seen around the local religious group, though it's not known if he's actually a member or if he's merely observing the cult's behavior. Dahlia Gillespie. Dahlia is a devout, almost, almost fanatical follower of the local religion. She has raised her daughter, Alessa, to do whatever is necessary for the good of the cult, even if it means the ultimate sacrifice. Almost fanatic. <laughs> and Nurse Lisa Garland. Travis meets Lisa at Akamela Hospital, where she seems kind-hearted, flirtatious, and innocent. How long can she stay this way in the darkness of Silent Hill? Remains to be seen. And those are our side characters. We've met them all so far, and they all they they are all from the first game, since this is the origins of Silent Hill. Right, we need to go up here. So Travis really hasn't gotten much of the way in, of any answers so far. He was in the sanitarium. He eventually met Lisa, and he said, Lisa, can you see any of this? Is it dark for you too? And then Lisa just didn't answer. And then Travis asked, is that Alessa in there? And Lisa said no and ran away. So... I'm sure Travis has many questions about what's happening here, but he hasn't actually been able to ask anyone. He did meet Dahlia for a little bit, but Dahlia does what Dahlia does and just is very cryptic about things. Here we go. Here's the lumber yard. Actually, I have my gun out. And why don't we switch to a melee weapon? Also, my heart is beating. Do I need a health drink? Maybe I should also drink, drink some caffeine. There we go. Feeling fine. What a strange squeaking sound we're hearing. Oh, we'll always take a sledgehammer. It's always welcome. Not sure why the camera angle changes there. Nothing happens. Someone has written on the newspaper. Why are you helping her, Travis? Did you see that nurse? So when it says nurse, are we talking about Lisa or are we talking about the nurse that 
was butchered, the nurse monster. Which nurse are we talking about? Like, Lisa seemed like she was doing fine. And, uh, that one nurse not monster had been killed, but we've killed plenty of them. But we're being asked, why are we helping her? Not much of a mystery is that Travis has been helping Alessa somehow. She's been directing us to strange triangular pieces that we've been collecting. We emerge on the other side of the lumber yard. The theater's up there. But you know how it goes. We gotta look all the way around. Taking the sights, like on Midway Avenue. Well, Midway... Nothing... Nothing much to see here on Midway Avenue, I suppose. Pity we were not able to go into that town hall and ask the mayor what is up with the chasms. But, but, oof, a lot of cameras, a lot of camera switching right there. Just take it slow. I get turned around by the camera switching. I mean, maybe I just don't have to get this close to it to make the camera switch, but, you know, we want to see all the all the roads and in the town and the camera angles. Ugh. It's just weird how, uh, how it's done like that. Look at, like, yeah, find some target pistol ammo. Check all the nooks and the crannies. Find items. That's how it goes. I like to imagine Travis just furiously scribbling red lines, red zigzagging lines on his map. Maybe we could try to get to the interstate. You know, that's probably where Travis's truck is, right? He would, he's probably driving on the interstate. Oh, so tired. these camera angles S just furiously scribbling red lines we got a fence there just trying to keep my distance from those boys because they do that no no thank you sir See, that, that's the thing that I was worried about. Okay, this is blocked. Yeah, so that's the interstate. Can't get to the interstate. Maybe we can go up to the Lutheran Church. Do you think the monsters in this game represent Travis's fears or Alessa's? There's some blood heading up to the Lutheran Church. But what if we try to keep going towards the theater? See, I'm thinking that we were in the hospital and there were nurses. 
And in Silent Hill 1, the nurses, you know, the monsters are Alessa's creations. But would there be a reason at this point in time that she would see nurses as monsters? Like, she's only right now gone to the hospital. She hasn't been there for seven years, which would be the case in one. Is Travis afraid of nurses? Afraid of nurses with cleavage? Possibly. So scary. Now this blood trail leads here. Oh, so tired. And we can go in. Travis said at the beginning, he's just not finding the right girl, bud. But who is the right girl for Travis? Has he tried dating nurses before? And it ends up with the nurse attempting to stab Travis with a scalpel? Look, we don't know about the troubled history of this man, aside from the whole thing with his mother. We picked up a lamp. We know this is a man who sees a lamp on an end table and decides he's going to pick it up to use it as a weapon. It's the kind of way, he, it's the way Travis thinks. And we, fa we find where the blood trail leads to a bedroom. Someone has written on the napkin, Someone made a hole. Go home, Travis. Oh no, you're not gonna fool Travis. Going through holes only leads to bad things. We know about that. A monster. Someone has mutilated it. The blood is all over the room. Well, we've seen a monster that has been mutilating other monsters. Well, there is a hole. Not in the wall, but it's in the floor. We can drop down to the lower level. Let's do it. See, I figure if the monsters in this game were Alessa's, you'd think, considering the extreme trauma she just went through, that the monsters would be fiery or, like, maybe look like Dahlia. But, like, there really isn't... There really aren't monsters like that, though. The mailbox for apartment 213 is overflowing. Looks like the mail hasn't been collected for weeks. Oh, no, it's my mailbox. No, I, I collect my mail. Opening it, another story. I collect it. Okay, why do we need to know about apartment 213? Well, maybe let's just remember that for later. All right, these were the uh, Greenfield Apartments. So we were able to bypass that blockage to get to the theater through there. And Travis is relieved about that because after all this exhaustion and terror, he just wants to watch a show. Travis enjoys a good play. He doesn't get to watch too many, being on the road all the time. But hey, why don't we watch The Tempest? Here's the ticket booth. A small slot here for tickets. Fortunately, we have a ticket. We don't know who gifted us this ticket. I used the ticket. There was a noise from the main door. Actually, it says canceled on that, doesn't it? I can't read it, but that looks like it says canceled. Does that mean we're not going to watch The Tempest? And 
Fort fortunately, they do give us the map right away. All right, let's have a look. There are two floors to this. And that's it. Considerably smaller than the sanitarium. So we should save. All right, let's see what's on the program. Folk Legends. Take the costume for Caliban. The designer, Bill Ortega, has taken a native buffalo spirit, fusing it with the stark, iconic images seen in the ancient local cult of Valtiol. His set design for its dark, cavernous cave was inspired by Owl Cave, a local historical. Hey, some of those words are written in red. Caliban has it in his cave. Also, Valtiel, we see we see a little bit in Silent Hill 3. It's not a dead religion in Silent Hill, of course. But maybe some people are just like, hey, it would be awesome if we could take elements of that and put it in this play. What are you doing in here, Lisa? Sorry if I scared you. I thought I was the only one in here. It's dangerous. Dangerous? You're kidding. The door was open, so I let myself in. I just love the theater, Travis. I want to be an actress. But mom was a nurse and her mom was a nurse, so I'm going to be a nurse. I've got what it takes, though. I can't stop thinking about you, Travis. I want you. You're all I think about. Let's get the hell out of this crazy town. Run off. The two of us. We could be so good together. <laughs> See? I could be a star! <laughs> yeah. Well, see you around. Oh, wait, hold, hold on, Lisa, have you been seeing monsters everywhere? And, like, chasms in the roads? And, and, and have you seen my truck? Oh, Travis forgot to ask any of his questions, and now she's gone. Well, we're here at the theater. We might as well explore it. Yeah, so Lisa was in some pretty high spirits. I mean, she was more, you know, neutral the first time we met her. And then she was very sad in the sanitarium. And here she was, uh, you know, very, you know, very flirty and is all, I want to be an actress. Here's an example of my acting skills. We got a typewriter. A puppet. Looks like someone is in the middle of repairing it. So Lisa definitely has a, an assortment of moods. I hate you, Father. Hence, hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity. I'll be his shorty. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an impossible... Hush. How thick is there is no more such? You okay, Tony? Yes! Yes! Fine. Just a headache. A damned nose bleed. You mind if we stop for a moment? Hmm. One of those black and white flashbacks. The jagged wood. We got those in the sanitarium. Getting some here in the theater. Sounds like one of the actors had a bit of a congestion problem. Here is a kitchen knife, but this is not a kitchen.
I feel like the save points should be more trucker related. I don't know. I don't know what they would be. But I feel like they don't represent Travis, really. Hold on. Iron weights. Yeah, just pick up a pile of dumbbell weights. Shove them in your pocket and we're going to hit someone with them. I have so many weapons. If you've ever seen fan art of Travis just carrying a ton of stuff, I mean, this is why. Oh, here's our lamp. We just picked up this lamp from the, uh, from the inn. Peter. Good luck getting anything to work. This place was wired by idiots. The safety coitin is on the same circuit as the spotlights. If a light blows, the whole thing fuses and you can't move the safety curtain. Idiots. Safety inspectors would blow a fuse, literally, if they saw this stuff. Wouldn't happen in the city. See you when I get back. Eric. Right, so this is the switch for the curtain on the stage. And nothing's happening when we pull this switch. And we did read that note saying that for some reason, this is on the same circuit as the stage lights. Which is strange. Something to keep in mind. Alright, we just left curtain control. We could go up to the dressing rooms. Or we could go down. Which would go downstairs. How about we head up towards the dressing rooms? New type of enemy. But not really a new type of QTE. Oh, because I got QTE'd and I was holding that lamp. I dropped my lamp. How dare you? I wanted to use that lamp. Oh. That lamp gave its life for nothing. Yeah, I feel like those one-time one time weapons have sort of a limited use, considering that QTEs can just break them. Uh, let's check out the men's dressing room. And what have we here? A katana. Is it a, a fake one? Like, is it just a prop? A powerful weapon with a sharp and deadly blade. No, it's a real one. What's the description for the weights? They use these to tie down scenery and other theater stuff very heavy. All right, well, we do have our katana. I mean, he's only using one hand, which, you know, really should be using two. And a mirror. And also a note. Jack says the town is located on an old spiritual ground. Hopefully, we will be blessed. Prospero equals shaman. Feathers, smoke, totemic, totemic magic. Ariel equals air spirit. Flight? Projection? Puppets? Caliban equals Buffalo Spirit. Skins plus Berkhoffian performance on all fours. Poor actor. Oh, this critic does not like the actor who played Caliban. Before we go in that mirror, there's still some more rooms we could take a look at.
There's files and invoices. Coming? I guess it doesn't see me yet. Here we go. We got the sun totem. A square stone totem with a sun symbol painted on it. Well, what do we use this for? We don't know. But Travis's protagonist, Sense, tells him he should take it. Also, looks like scripts or something. Nothing useful. No, you look in the drawer, Travis. Look in the drawer where there's a gun. You can see the gun. It's right there. Doo -doo. We got the service pistol. Monday, rehearsals. Fantastic. New costumes. Fantastic. All in all. Fantastic Tuesday. Strange day. Girl snuck into theater today, playing hooky, no doubt. Took pity. Let her sit and watch the run-through. Very useful feedback. Terrified by Caliban. Good job, costume department. Seemed to dislike Prospero intensely. Proceedings brought to a premature end by poor Tony getting a shocking nosebleed during Act 1, Scene 2. We'll continue tomorrow. Hmm. A, a girl who no one knows who she is watched the rehearsal, didn't seem to like Prospero, and the actor playing Prospero suddenly had a coughing fit. How strange. Also, the girl was apparently scared of Caliban, which we have not seen yet. We got a health drink. Also, we picked up a more powerful gun. We have been using a gun. It's only a target pistol. Now we have a more serious handgun. Got too close. So, this one's locked, not jammed. That's the stage office. I haven't tried publicity office. I missed that door. There we go. Okay. So, I think I got all the doors. Yeah. Stage office is locked. Men's dressing room does have a portal in it. has a mirror. All right. Let's head to it and enter the dark theater. What will we find in the theater of the damned? You know, the doors that we tried are now not tried anymore. We gotta try them. Nothing here. That's jammed. That's jammed. This one's not jammed. Which one is this? This is the director's office. What does he have in here? We got the balcony corridor key. Anything else of note? I don't think so. So, balcony corridor. 
That's Light World. All right, so Balcony is on the second floor, not surprising. There is a Balcony corridor that we could now get to. course we also need to try to all, try all the doors draw as many red lines as possible on this map because that's how it goes in silent hill we all know this Just take a gun out. I've had it with you. Travis is getting humped more today than he has the past five years. up to the second floor, and what do we find? Broke my katana. Well, it was only a matter of time. They don't last forever. Find a special looking door. On either side of the door are two deep, square holes. Set into the door is a plaque which reads, I am a child torn by twin desires. I stand before a door. My right hand calls to the light. My left hand ushers in darkness. Well, if we're standing in front of a door, and our right hand has the light in it, and light is, an empty, is, a, is a square, maybe we could put this in there. Let me put that in there. But our left hand, we don't have darkness. We need to put darkness in the hole. It marks down the, the door on here, so that's fine. Let us go find some darkness for this hole. So, the door up here at the curtain control is locked, and I believe the only place we can really go is just back to the men's dressing room, back through the mirror. We did find something. We found the key to the balcony corridor.
So that backstage door I don't think open. That nah, that does not open. I actually got him with a a one-hit weapon before getting QTE'd. Smashed him with a bottle. Ah, uh, this one's locked from the other side. Gonna have to go back the way we came through curtain control. Finally, Travis got to use one of the many large, heavy items on his person. He's just so used to carrying them around and not using them. The safety curtain is blocking the stage. Gotta find a way to lift it. Got grabbed before I could use it. There we go. Alright, and if I don't finish them off right away, they do get up. so many bottles on this guy. Punches don't seem to work too well. Punches are a little high. One place we have not gone yet is up here to the second floor. Looks like there was a they've done Julius Caesar here before. Looks like Hamlet. Get to know, you know, some of the some of the more cultured side of Silent Hill, you know. It's not all just cults and such. Look, Silent Hill has a thriving arts community here. It tends to get overshadowed by, you know, the dark magic and all that. Well, here is the balcony corridor, and we found that key to go to the balcony corridor. Look, a cult tries to resurrect its god to cleanse the earth of sin. And before you know it, that's the only thing the town is known for. And it's really frustrating to be a part of the Silent Hill community, theater community. And like, whenever you mention that to anyone, they're like, oh, that's like the demon town. It's like, uh, there's, there's a lot more to us than that. People just don't see it that way. Peter, as expected, the spotlights are as screwy as the rest of this place. Finally got them working. My trusty voltmeter saved the day again. Remember, you need all the lights working, otherwise the circuit blows. Throwing the circuit breaker gets old fast. Here are my notes. B has to be half the wattage of D. A plus B must not exceed C. Wattage of D must not exceed A. Break a leg, says Eric. Look, Eric is not just going to give you the numbers. Eric thinks that if you want to do this, you need to do a little work yourself. He's given us a set of rules, and we have to figure out which of these light bulbs 
fits those rules. So, what did we get? We got 125 watt bulb, 500 bulb, 250, 750. A bulb for a spotlight rated 750 watts. And we do have to install these in order to complete the circuit. So we can then so the sta so the uh the cur the stage curtain can then be raised. Cuz as was said it's all on the same circuit. When they come running at you like that, you know they want to wrap your leg their their legs around you. There we go. Whoop. Probably should take a look at my health. All right. There's the catwalks. There's some storage back there. Let's have a look. We will not look. Let's go south. Let's go the other way. Typewriter. He got typewritered. We got more where that came from. We got the moon totem. Well, we did... We did use the light in one hand. Now we have the darkness for the other hand. Uh, I did not do it in time. Making me waste my typewriter. How dare you? Fall down any time now. Thank you. And it takes us out here. And it's just a, a little... Was there something there? Did I miss that? No, there wasn't. And it's just a quick, a quick run to that one mirror. I like how the screen shakes when we charge up our hard attack. Like, you can feel Travis's muscles straining, tensing, the veins bulging as he rears back for a mighty blow that only a trucker could give. Trucker strength. All right, let's head back to that special door. We already put one of the plates in it. Hey. Sirs. I, I know where I want to go. I want to go to the door. No need to fight. Smack that ass. 
<clears throat> some good punches. Okay, good. When it, when it turned around, I wasn't sure if it was going to get me. Where are we now? I think we're about to go down the stairs. Yeah, head down those stairs. Actually, it's up the stairs, I'm sorry. Going up to the second floor. Oh, look how many boys there are in here. There's so many. Look, we... All we want to do is get to that door. Sure, I'll use a first aid kit. Alright, here we are. The square that requires the darkness. We have it. Moon totem. Moon totem go. Doors unlocked. Hold on. I I was too close to the door. There we go. I have to It's weird if you're like right up against the door, it doesn't seem to register you as opening it. You have to move back a little bit and then it opens. Anyway. This leads to the catwalks and also storage. Well, we already know that we have our lights, and we, we need to install the stage lights. That's what we're doing right now. We need to install the stage lights so we can complete the circuit that will allow us to raise the stage curtain. Now, if you may be wondering, why do we need to do that? That's good. You should be wondering that. Because I'll tell you... No, no one's mentioned it so far. Travis just, you know, does things. He wanted to come to the theater. He's here. He might as well explore. Excuse me. Gun might not be the best choice at this range. There's that gun. That worked. Oh yeah, hand, hand's probably not good for this either. That could have gone better. Okay, costume storage, scenery workshop, orchestra storage is where we are. I dropped my filing cabinet. They make me drop so many of those things. So many weapons gone to waste. Anyway, here's costume storage. Let's see what they've got in here. What we got? I don't see money costumes lying around. Nothing I can use, says Travis. Nothing useful. Oh, there's a mirror. That's useful. But before we go through, we should probably take a look at the other rooms here to see if there's anything we could use. Uh, I probably should reload my guns while I'm here. That's not actually the button I wanted to press for that, but never mind. Just a warning shot, letting everyone know. Look, if you accidentally fire a gun, don't let anyone realize that was an accident. You have to act like it was deliberate. Yeah, that's right, I'm just keeping you on your toes. Expect the unexpected. No, what? 
Of course that was on purpose. I know what I'm doing. You think I was gonna... Pfft, think I just accidentally discharged a gun? Well, speaking of guns, if we go all the way to the end of this hallway, we find the hunting rifle. This breech loader is slow to fire, but powerful with a long range. I do not have any ammo for it, though, it seems. There's also oh, there's rifle ammo right there. Alright, so, well, I didn't try opening that storage door, but I don't believe you can go in there. Yeah, that's jammed. We have to make sure, though. We have to draw the red lines on the map. It's very important. Okay, so we've gone in there. Now, let's see. What we got... Yeah, that's right. There was a, a mirror in here. We took a look at what else we could find, and we found that rifle. Now let's use our mirror. Anything to find in here? He's looking at something. Nothing useful. What's he looking at? He got a katana. A replacement katana. Alright. Shooting him didn't actually seem to stop him from hitting me. I'm out of that. You know, melee weapons generally working better for me. Usually. Uh... Oh, never mind. We're in the orchestra storage, and there's a save point here. These appear to be cases for instruments. And iron weights. You'd think that Travis's cardio would improve by carrying all this weight on him as he runs around everywhere. Music stands. I can't play any instruments. No time to learn when he's on the road all the time. Well, as far as where we could go... There is that storage room over here, but yeah, that's jammed over he in the real world as well. All right, what do we want to do? We, we still have those lights, and we need to get on the catwalks in order to install them. We've had the, those lights for kind of a while, and what we've been doing is just sort of making our way to try to get onto those catwalks so we can install them and complete the circuit... Which would allow us to pull up the stage curtain. And now, finally, we have made it onto a catwalk. A 
a large theater spotlight. Label on it says A. It's missing a bulb. All right, do you remember the riddle? It was, uh... B has to be half the wattage of D. A plus B must not exceed C, but D must not exceed A. Our choices are 125 watts, 750 watts, 250 watts, 500 watts. So that's like, you know, you gotta, gotta write them all down. Just think about the rules that's being explained to you and try to figure out which bulbs could go in which sockets to align themselves with the rules. So D must not exceed A. A plus B must not exceed D. B has to be half wattage of D. Um, well, we're looking at A right now, and it turns out A is 500 watts. Then we have B. B is uh, 125. Get the C. C is the big one. It's 750. And D is 250. All the bulbs are installed. Let's turn them on. I like when spotlights turn on with a loud sound. I, they don't actually do that, but in, you know, movies and such, they always do. Can I stomp? Please, no, not stomping? Yeah, you can also destroy your one-time weapons by smashing them on downed enemies. No need to do that, but I just did it there. Anyway, important thing, the lights are on on the catwalk, so let's head back down to the stage. Yes. Actually, I can just walk out here. No, actually, that's the way we came, isn't it? Yeah, I want I want to go back down to the balcony corridor. Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Gulp, gulp, gulp. The long weapons like this really are not that good. You might think they would be.
All right, back to the stage we go. So the progression here really has been to find out that to raise the stage curtain, we need to install those lights to complete the circuit so the switch to raise the curtain will work. And that's what we've been doing this whole time. And now we've finally installed everything. Circuit is complete. Now we can return to the stage and raise that curtain. Ow, hey. I can't see anything useful on the desk. All right, now, finally, to pull the switch. Sounds like the curtains come up. And uh, I should, uh, let me just save real quick. All right. What do we find behind that stage? Well, we find a giant mirror. Only one thing to do, really. And on the other side... Well, nothing really. Nothing happens. Something's blocking it. I can't open that door. Is this on the map, by the way? Yeah, it is. Yeah, we're on the stage in the other world, but there's nothing here. So let's take a further look at what we find on this stage. Well, we find a control panel. We have scenery and we have props. We have we brought down an archway. What kind of props do we have? We have a table with books on it. What other kind of props do we have? That ominous sound indicates something to us. That when we bring down the matching background and prop, maybe something happens with that mirror. It's a wooden tree. What happens if we use the mirror now? Well, we're not on a stage anymore. We're outside. Not a large outside area. But it is outside, and there are... At least, well, one tree right here. I got the stage office key. I don't have a map for this area. Yeah, this isn't the theater. It's a forest. We don't know what this is. Be not a fear. The aisle is full of noises. Sounds and sweet airs that give the light and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand clangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that, if I then had waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, clouds me thought would open and show riches, ready to drop upon me that, when I waked, I cried to dream again. Another flashback. Of a, of a of a performance in the play. We 
we don't know if this play ever actually, you know, was performed. We know there was a rehearsal and that Alessa was in the audience. I don't think we know if any if this play was ever actually put on. So what other combinations might we have in this control panel? Well, we can see that props is missing a switch here. But we can see what the other backgrounds are like. There is a cave background. And a library background. Well, one of the props was a book that was a, uh, a table that had books on it. It's good that there's a loud, scraping, metallic sound to alert Travis that he did something. A wooden prop table. Books and papers are painted on it. And back here, we find an actual library. What forbidden texts might be here? These books are in a language I don't recognize. The letters are strange. Chapter 2. Repression and Coercion. It is a fact well known to intelligence services and military agents. The more controlled a mind, the more a mind censors itself. The easier it is for outside influences to take hold and piggyback such mental programming. This is why these agencies choose for their pawns those individuals most compromised by their own mental issues. Hmm. A mind compromised by mental issues. Amongst the tribes who have developed the ability to control and focus their projections, there exists one that is feared throughout the whole community. Their shaman claims to have the ability to kill with thought alone, projecting his desire to kill into the body of the victim. What a useful ability. Throughout these case studies, we see the victim's brain struggling to cope with the conflict caused by abuse at the hands of a loved one. In many of these cases, the abused child's self appears to split in two. One personality continues to love the abuser and seeks their approval. The other personality contains all the rage and anger of the abused, and in many ways becomes a mirror of the abuser, seeking to inflict its pain on others. Sadly, it is often this self that becomes dominant. Hmm. Mental problems due to abuse from a loved one. What would Travis know about that? Split into two personalities. These books are completely alien to me. These books aren't even made of paper. Like made of skin or something. Who binds a book in skin? Some of these books are strange to look at. I got an amp pool. We love it. I got some rifle ammo. Good, too. Chapter 2. Manifestations of Delusions. Phenomena such as telekinesis, poltergeists, to use a popular term, often occur. These seem frequent alongside negative emotions, fear, worry, or stress, suggesting it is these emotions which are manifesting as external energy with physical effects. Nightmares are especially strong triggers. In all cases, these phenomena arise from children or adolescents, and the overwhelming majority of subjects are female. Well, that is some familiar text because it is from the first game. That is from uh, The Monster Lurks by Leonard Rhine. It is a text that you can find in the elementary school. And I think that's everything that we ha that we can find here.
Well, nothing essential, but we did find some, you know, information, some texts. But as far as what we needed to find... Stage office key. A simple metal key. And the stage office is back there. So it's not far. No, actually, I go... Yeah, I go this way. Through the control room. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> yep. Getting pincered, getting it from both ends. I don't want to use that one. Can choke so much, so much choking. There we go. Anyway, we're going to the stage office. Probably should check my health. All right, let's get into a more narrow section. Wow, that, those are breaking real fast on them. Gonna stab ya. Gonna poke ya. That broke already? Anyway, we're going to the stage office. Here it is. I got some shotgun ammo. I used the stage office key. Hello. You are, you are short. I cannot fist fight you.
glug glug. Anyway, why are we in here? We got a key. What do we find? We find a prop control lever. Yeah, there was a missing switch. On, uh... On that control panel. Well, we found it in here. Papers and books. Ah, yes, they respond. Well, maybe not all of them. Seems like there's only the one. I hear another one. I hear another one. Oh, no, actually, that's something else entirely. Okay. We have the third lever. For the props. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Need to go through curtain control. Hello. Hi. I'm gonna save a game. Okay. Control lever. Use. I used it. So I put it here. We were not able to use this one before. That brings that that brings that down. Well, kind of hard to say what that is, but there is only one scenery that we haven't used yet, which is the cave. Well, you might remember a note that we saw at the beginning of the theater that said it was something like, Caliban has it in his cave. So, maybe we should get a, a, a gun out. Maybe we should do that and head inside. Here he is. He's a big boy and he will charge at you. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Had to use all my rifle uh, rounds, but took him down. So yeah, Caliban was... We saw the note that said that Alessa, when watching the rehearsal, was scared of Caliban. So he's the boss of the level. I assume the one in the play did not look so intimidating. It was just like a guy in a costume. This one seemed uh, much bigger than a guy in a costume. But hey, we have a piece. It's the falsehood piece. 
You need these, don't you? She loves knocking him out. It actually makes for a great sleep aid. Like, Travis hasn't mentioned it, but he does have insomnia. All you need is Alessa to give you one of those looks and the sirens start blaring. Knocks you right out. What do we have here? We got the motel key. Riverside Motel. I think I've been there before. Oh no. Childhood memories being brought to the surface? We better save our game. Well, we could we should look at this key. Oh, and also the falsehood piece. Right? Has falsehood engraved on its side. We got three of these pieces now. Looks like a door key. Has a keychain advertising the Riverside Motel. Also, maybe we should... Uh, the only healing supply I have is this. Alright. Sure. So... That is the theater of Silent Hill Origins. We came in looking to take in a show, but unfortunately there was no show being put on today. No theater troupe putting on The Tempest, unfortunately. What we found was Lisa hanging out in the theater, being wistful over not... She can't become an actress. She wants to be an actress, but her family has been nurses, so she has she's going to become a nurse as well. Which we know from Silent Hill 1 doesn't turn out too well for her. Maybe things would have been better if she did try to become an actress. After that, Travis just kind of wanders around uh, of, uh, in a quest to raise the stage curtain. And upon doing so, eventually faces Caliban to get the next piece of the, well, what you can probably tell is the Flaros. Um, Travis doesn't seem to know why he's doing what he's doing, but it's pretty clear that Alessa is just sort of guiding him around to these places where the Flaros pieces can be found. Though Travis doesn't seem to really be questioning it. He's just, he's kind of just going along with it, really. Doesn't seem to have much to say. He could have asked Lisa some questions when he met her in the theater, but didn't. Well, I guess Travis is just kind of going with the flow. You know, keep, keep going along with it. Eventually, good things will happen. Eventually, he will find his truck again. Will that be next time? I don't know. We'll take a break, though, and return with some more Silent Hill Zero.